Welcome, Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News. It's April 26, 2018. And uh, we're going to talk about fear and loathing in the chemtrail community today. Um, getting kind of sick of hearing the same old, same old from the usual suspects. So I've been asked about this a couple million times. And... Uh, it's really time to just address it, you know, face to face, look you in the eye and say how I feel about things. The only difference is, uh, we're going to have to try to be a little more polite. So with that, I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about chemtrails, talk about me as a, you know, just in general, who I am and why I do what I do and, uh, address three Maybe we'll, we'll stick to two, but possibly three individuals in this chemtrail community who really just gripe my ass. Now, both most of you already know um, my work. It's available at climateviewer.com, right up here. Um, I'm working on something called the Environmental Modification Accountability Act of 2018. Um, purpose of this is a solution. Because if we're not solution-based, we're not actually activists, we're just entertainers. Um, and I think that after seven years of giving this a lot of thought, that I've really come up with a pragmatic solution. So I hope you guys will check that out. I'm going to drop that in chat right now. Um, it's available at climateviewer.com slash nmod. My other website, weathermodificationhistory.com. You guys can check it out also on Facebook as well. Um, Dominic Marama and I put this beautiful thing together. Um, and we try to keep it real. Like, realer than most. You're not going to find information like this anywhere else on the net. Uh, let alone so well organized. And finally, my beautiful creation, Climate Viewer 3D where you can come to the geoengineering and weather modification section and th see things like all of the ionospheric heaters in the world, um, global weather modification projects, um, you know, the just chemical tracer experiments where they dump chemicals in the sky to do X, Y, and Z. Stuff you're not going to find anywhere else yet. There... Two, yeah, it's the third guy. He really doesn't count as much, but Dane Wigington, Russ Tanner, and Matt Lamon. I'm up to here with these guys, and this is not coming from a point, a place of jealousy, because you know, at the end of the day, this is not about who's the most popular. This is about changing the world, changing the future. That's why we cre I created Weather Modification History, specifically because all I'm hearing is a lot of, you know, yap, 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 global this, you know, it's depop that, it's geoengineering, it's this, it's that. But really, not a lot of facts. A um, whole lot of fear, not a lot of facts. And that's not how I roll. Um, so, you know, it kind of gets kind of old hearing, you know, getting message after message every single day from people who are like, hey, I watched your uh, latest video. Um, come over here to climateviewer.com. You can check it out. How jets make metal clouds. Just the facts. And for me, it's pretty simple. Um, you know, planes put metal in the air. We don't like breathing metal. We also don't like planes making clouds. I personally don't. I like blue skies. So I try to focus on the how it works and focus less on the agendas. Whereas most of the people I see are following Dane Wigington, Russ Tanner, and they're all about agenda. I mean, that's really all they talk about is agendas. They don't talk about any facts. There's no pragmatism whatsoever. Um, I call them infotainers because that's what they do. They entertain people with fear. Um, if you've been to climateviewer.com, you've probably seen my propaganda page. And fear is the path to the dark side. 
that's, you know, that's my main point, you know, um, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Uh, that's, that's MK ultra. That's what the government does. That's what the mainstream media does. They play to your fear and playing to your fear leaves you impotent, leaves you uh, unable to do anything about anything. Um, and certainly not having the facts is going to make it to where you have no ability to ever change this world. So this kind of stuff is unacceptable to me. However, I have a set of morals. So what you're not going to find is me writing lengthy articles about Dane Wigington or Russ Tanner or, or Matt Lamman on my website because I find it not to be productive. Um, it's not pragmatic and it certainly is not going to get us to a point where we ever really deal with the problem. And this is, this is what's called slave speak or the mental plantation. I heard, uh, I heard Kanye West talking about getting out of that mental plantation, and I swear to God, it just brought a smile to my face. There's so many people really waking up. Like, you know, there are people who are woke, and then there are people who have really woken up. And, you know, I thought I was woke four years ago. I was not. And it goes like this. It's hard to fight an enemy who has outposts in your head. Sally Kempton. Ideas are more powerful than guns. We would not let our enemies have guns. Why should we let them have ideas? Joseph Stalin. And finally, language creates spooks that get into our head and hypnotize us. Hmm. Language. So really the control mechanism that we're dealing with here is language. And... There are people who really try to control the narrative, namely Dane Wigington and Russ Tanner. And I'm going to start with this. I've challenged both of these guys to a debate year after year after year. They're never going to debate me because I will bend them over my knee and spank them hard. This isn't about that either. This is about common courtesy, pragmatism, and doing something about the problem. We're never going to be able to get to that point if we are dominated, subjugated, and controlled by words. Case in point, chemtrails. Now, one of the very first articles I ever wrote about this subject was called Chemtrails and the Lies Between the Lines. You can go to my section on artificial clouds, scroll all the way to the bottom, go to the last page, and one of the very first articles I ever wrote was called chemtrails and the lies between the lines as you can see here and really what i'm saying here is that people don't want to focus on the facts they want to focus on the scary they want to focus on what you know pays the bills as they say you know what's going to get me a hundred thousand views you know um i don't have that i don't i don't foresee that happening anytime soon i could really give a damn at this point about that what i do care about though is that if my message doesn't reach large numbers of people then clearly i'm not being effective and i have to ask myself constantly why am i not effective but then i get emails from people saying things like hey i watched your most recent video on how jets make metal clouds i found it pretty fascinating how you basically showed us that Chromium, iron, molybdener, sodium, calcium, and aluminum. All coming out of the back of jet planes. Also detected. Vanadium, barium, cobalt, copper, nickel, lead, magnesium, manganese, silicone, titanium, zirconium. The list goes on. References to that here. You can see my other article. Aluminum and barium. Chemtrails explain just the facts. Where I go through the hundred year history of sounding rockets something most people don't talk about what's actually in the jet fuel there's the aluminum there's the barium and strontium and titanium oh by the way when they switched from gasoline they went to diesel fuel calcium you know 5,000 parts per billion up to 31,000 parts per billion 
That's right, Anthony. Good marketing. Um, guys like Dane Wigington, they pay for bots. They pay for advertisers. They pay for people to come spam out all my videos. Hey, check out geoengineeringwatch.org. Now, I'm not here to tell you that Dane Wigington is a shill because I don't know that. Dane Wigington may be a very good person on the inside. On the outside, from my personal experiences, you know, talking to him, he is a very bad guy. And the reason he's a bad guy is because everything on his website he stole from somebody else. Most importantly, he stole my patent list. We got into a legal where he actually had a lawyer threaten me over telling him that all I want you to do is say, hey, where you got it from? He has another article at the top of Dane Wigington's geoengineeringwatch.org called Harp, VLF, and things like that. He stole that article from a guy named Dutch Sense. Um, when he went to the hearing that they had out in his hometown, it was set up by Suzanne Marr from Bye Bye Blue Sky. He took it over. Um, and then, whenever Max Bliss, and many of you probably know Max Bliss, when Max Bliss put a copy of that video up on his channel, Dane Wigington flagged his channel down and, and Max Bliss's channel was deleted. Max Bliss has, is a fellow compatriot hard-working activist trying to spit the truth all he did was make a copy of Dane Wigington's video and he lost 10,000 subscribers when his YouTube channel was deleted I called Dane Wigington and I said Dane this is not cool this is not how a community operates take it back go to YouTube take back your copyright strike so that at least Max can get his channel back and he told me on the phone, hell no. <clears throat> I could reach through the phone and punch the... Anyway, that's not the point of this. The point of this is that these two guys, Russ Tanner and Dane Wigington, they're buddies. And they, they got each other's back and they don't want anybody looking at the facts. They don't want you talking about where the barium and aluminum is really coming from. They certainly don't want you talking about jet fuel. And all of this just stinks of covering for the aviation industry which I find to be completely unacceptable that's why I try to arm people with as much facts as possible barium compounds serve as corrosion and rust inhibitors detergent anti-smoke additives in fuels period paper characterization of jet aircraft engine particulates by XPS result from apex 3 Here's another one from the U.S. CDC. Oh, we've heard of the CDC. Barium compounds are used in oil and gas drilling muds, automotive paints, stabilizers for plastic, case hardening steels, bricks, tiles, lubricating oils, and jet fuel. And this is from the CDC's Tox Guide for Barium. Cast number 7440-39-3. Furthermore, Barium fuel related effects of barium fuel additive on fuel sulfur level and diesel particulate emissions. Effects of barium based additives in diesel exhaust particulates. Barium additives in diesel smoke suppressants. U.S. patent number 341067 fuel compositions mixed with 230 grams of barium oxide. Reduction of jet fuel exhaust smoke by fuel additives 1967. Also, barium. All in the jet fuel. Now, if you go over to Russ Tanner's Chemtrail Global Skywatch and you mention this to that son of a bitch, he will delete your comment. If you go to, to geoengineeringwatch.org or Chemtrail Global Skywatch and you post Climate Viewer 3D at climateviewer.org, if you post weathermodificationhistory.com or climateviewer.com, they will delete your comments and ban you. I'm not that guy. I'm going to tell you, go to Chemtrail Global Sky Watch. Go to geoengineeringwatch.org. Read everything they got. But please read mine as well. And that's where gatekeeping starts. That's where the language control starts. They only want, you know, uh, Russ Tanner would only have you call them chemtrails and say that it all is a secret government program. Every single bit of it. Now, I do not doubt for one second that there is a secret government program because the very first article I wrote was right here. It was a conspiracy 
military experiments on unsuspecting public, where I go through exactly that where the U.S. military was spraying the entire public like roaches from airplanes, something called Operation Large Area Coverage. Um, and I go through the whole history of spraying people from, you know, Silver Eye died in Operation Popeye to Operation Ranch Hand Trail Dust, where they were doing the Agent Orange. It wasn't just Agent Orange. There were over 19 million gallons of herbicides sprayed all over Vietnam. Bug warfare. Dropping uh, mosquitoes from bombs. Operation Big Itch. 1954 Dugway Proving Grounds. Uh, tropical rat fleas for biological warfare. Operation Big Buzz. 330,000 uninfected mosquitoes were dropped from aircraft in E-14 bombs. Okay? This is where I started. This article is dated 2013 11 so november 2013 i was talking about chemtrails i wanted people to understand that history repeats itself and this is a fact terry um right now in chat is the one who prompted this video today in fact terry thank you for mentioning that she posted um weather modification history on chemtrail global skywatch he deleted it and messaged her about it you can see it right there in chat. She's the reason I'm doing this video right now. She is probably the 400th person who has messaged me with something similar to that. Radioactive release, Operation Large Area Coverage, 1957 to 58. The U.S. Army Chemical Corps was dispersing microscopic zinc cadmium sulfide from planes in a C-119 flying boxcar. They sprayed it from coast to coast. Okay, Operation Do 1 and 2, same idea. They were making large aerosol clouds released offshore till it drifted on land, covering all of California. And in St. Louis, 1953, the Manhattan-Rochester Coalition, research on health effects of radioactive materials and tests on vulnerable populations without consent in St. Louis. Uh, this is a heck of a paper. If you have not read it, read it, you need to. But here is the actual full list of zinc cadmium sulfide spraying that the U.S. Army Chemical Corps did all over America. It was secret. Nobody knew about it. And it took 50 years for them to admit to it. So do I believe chemtrails are a possibility? You bet your sweet ass I do. We'll go further. Chemtrails, comatives, and terrorism. In this one, I go into another series of real chemtrails. Let's go ahead and drop these links for everybody in chat. Here's the one I just did. This is one of my first articles, 2013. Chemtrails, Comatives, and Terrorism. This is up next. I wrote this in January of 2015. And I'll guarantee you guys have never heard of this stuff. How many people in chat know what a comative is? Has anybody ever heard of a calmative? You're about to. So, this is where it gets really freaky. Really freaky chemtrail stuff. So, basically there's, you know, 110,000 flights per day. And they're covering the skies and clouds. And of course everybody's concerned. What if they're up to no good? Well, there's fuel air dumping. Which just in and of itself should be illegal. Jet fuel is highly toxic, full of carcinogens, that's cancer-causing chemicals, and when it's dumped out of the plane when it goes to land, that is very harmful to people on the ground, to say the least. Um, when I went and I spoke at the EPA hearing in 2015, I actually mentioned um, there was a, a case in Fallon, Nevada, where basically the military was dropping JP-8 out of their planes, and it was poisoning the local community and the government got involved and lawsuits were flying um you don't really hear about that too much today but chemical weapon trails distinct possibility and what are chemical weapons that might be used harassing agents like tear agents vomiting agents malodorants 
incapacitating agents like psychological agents, other things that knock you out, blistering agents, blood agents, choking agents, nerve agents, calmatives. Now this is from something from what's called the Joint Non-Lethal Warfare Directorate, JNLWD. Now, I will, Ken, I will definitely go over their, the, the differences in their opinion because basically Russ Tanner says he can smell chemtrails and Dane Wigington refers to call them, uh, refuses to call them chemtrails because he says that's not sciencey enough. So he calls them geoengineering. Um, but that's not, that's still like, I mean, it's true and it's still skirting the bigger issue. Um, planes making clouds is more like cloud seeding than it is geoengineering. It is geoengineering, but it is still cloud seeding. Um, so the Joint Non-Lethal Warfare Directorate um, had this paper called Narco Airways. And in it, they talked about placement of incapacitant aerosol generators on board planes, as well as injectable pharmaceutical units outside the cockpit door. This was post 9-11, 2001, and they were talking about how to deal with you know, terrorists on board planes. So the Joint Non-Lethal Warfare Directorate said, hey, let's uh, put chemtrails on planes. And you can see it right here, incapacitating agent generator. It's got a fog cloud spraying chemtrails inside the cab. They even talked about putting nets in the ceiling that could just drop down and trap everybody on board. Smoke generators at the front of the plane, armed doors. We've all seen the armed doors. They actually did do that. Um, injectable pharmaceuticals and tasers near the cockpit door. Wow. Um, but this was called Narco Airways, and they were talking about how to put chemicals on planes to knock people out. Those are called calmatives. If you have not heard of this calmative, this one's really going to shock you. It's called the Gay Bomb. Also known as the Halitosis Bomb, the idea was pretty simple. The United States Army Chemical Corps and the Joint Non-Lethal Weapon Directorate said that they wanted to make chemicals they could drop over, you know, military troops and turn them gay. So they're so busy having sex that they can't fight. That's a chemtrail. That's a real chemtrail. Real as rain. Um, moving along. So what is the Joint Non-Lethal Weapon Directorate? Let's, uh, let's pop this one up real full screen real quick. Let's see. Oh, wait. No, that's the wrong screen. That's my other screen. Let's go here. I guess we'll just have to zoom in on it a little bit. Oh, my goodness. Now, I just went to the Wayback Machine and pulled up the PDF that I got it from. This was originally on the sunshineproject.org. Uh, actually, let me give you the, the web.archive.org on this because this is a pretty good one. You guys might want to know this. Atmospheric rivers do play into this, but that's a video from another day, Brian. Appreciate you, man. So this is the Joint Non-Lethal Weapon Directorate's Chemical Weapons Program. Now this is, if you're looking for a place to find chemtrails, that's all these people do. They make chemtrails. They also have this, High Contaminant Labs and Other Facilities for the U.S. Biodefense Program. And as you can see, these are biological weapon facilities all over America. These are real chemtrails. These are very dangerous stuff. During Hurricane Bob, um, back in the 90s, there was a Plum Island lost power. And when it did, the doors, the containment doors that, can, that are supposed to keep all these super bugs in there, they came open during a hurricane. And now we have Lyme disease all up and down the East Coast. That Lyme disease that came from Plum Island has now been attributed to Morgellons. Scientifically attributed to Morgellons. Not coming from Delta Airlines, coming from Plum Island, Hurricane Bob, and a failure to keep their superbugs in there. Nonetheless, that's something interesting. Now, now we're going to talk about a real chemtrail that's pretty recent. Agent Green. 
If you haven't heard of Agent Green, basically these agents threaten to legitimize agriculture bio warfare, are environmentally unsafe, and threaten wild plants and agriculture and fragile and bio biodiverse ecosystems. They also endanger human health and most importantly, the global ban on biological weapons, according to the Sunshine Project, whose website has been deleted. Now I'm putting this stuff together for you because I want you guys to know. I am a firm believer that in, that secret projects do occur, have occurred, and history repeats itself. Those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. Period. So, Agent Green was a chemical weapon that was designed to kill coca plants down in Colombia, um, in South America. And the idea was this, there's a, a mold that they sprayed from planes called F. oxysporum. Um, and you can see it right here, F. oxysporum on infected cotton, on watermelons, in bean fields, and aster plants. Well, this didn't go so well because, and you can see right here, chronolo chronology of myco Mycoherbicide development against drug plants with special reference to the genus Furicerium and Pleospora. I will give you the link for that in chat as well. From, is that uh, mycoherbicide.info? Okay, click that thing. So, 1989-90, Texas U.S. farmers and ranchers report numerous outbreaks of illness among pigs and horses. Tests find fuminosin concentrations in corn-based horse feed as high as 126 parts per million. So apparently the chemtrails that we sprayed all the way down in South America made their way back to Texas. Surprise, surprise. That's not a good thing. 1990 in Cameron County, Texas, rates of neural tube birth defects begin to rise, primarily driven by an increase in anencephaly, which halts brain development. This increase is not noted until a year later. Now it's blamed on the effects of fusarium epidemic in corn. 2000 U.S. FDA issues draft guidelines for maximum levels of fuminosin, in, allowed in food. In a letter to federal officials, Texas Department of Health worries that levels may be too high for people to consume corn as a dietary staple, especially in Hispanic populations because they love their corn tortillas. Hell, I love them. Um, December 12th, 2002, Representative John Micah brings up his desire to restart the Fusarium Mycoherbicide program in U.S. House hearing titled America's heroin crisis, Colombian heroin, and how we can improve Plan Colombia. Now, I know you guys have all heard about the heroin crisis going on today. Warning! In order to stop that heroin project uh, problem before, their idea was chemtrails. And the chemtrails were molds and spores that they sprayed all over South America, which made their way back home to Texas, ended up in corn, affecting pigs and horses, and God forbid it might have something to do with mad cow disease. You will not find this information on any other website on the internet. I don't know why. Again, I go to the zinc cadmium sulfide stuff here, and let me see if there's anything else worth showing here. Um, microspheres for micro worlds. These are hollow. Um, how do I put this? Let's just read it. Savannah River nuclear site microsphere filled with palladium, where the top of the micro balloon has been removed to view the inside. They took nuclear waste and turned it into hollow glass balls. And the hollow glass balls can be used for things like. Uh, not to mention also contributing to arenas such as nuclear proliferation and global warming. Now that global warming one got me by surprise, but then I read an article which was on um, CNS News, which is right here. Cybercast News Service, <coughs> excuse me. 
Details from the documents at Cybercast News obtained under a Freedom of Information Act request show that scientists at the U.S. Department of Energy's Savannah River National Laboratory in Aiken, South Carolina, not too far from where I am, I'm in Sumter, South Carolina, are conducting limited tests and developing computer models of what might happen if a huge amount of particulate matter is shot into the stratosphere. The particles consisting of very fine and special form of glass. Ooh. Porous walled glass microspheres would be able to absorb a certain amount of carbon dioxide and would reflect sunlight away from the Earth. Quote, the overall goal of this task is to understand and evaluate the implications of deploying porous glasses as an agent to reduce global warming, the DOE work proposal said. Um, and then it goes on to say the government pro project began last year and ends in April 30th. The DOE did not speak with Cybercast News Service about the project, but scientists familiar with this line of research say it grows out of the proposal first articulated by Paul Crutzen, who won the Nobel Pete 1995 Nobel Prize for his work discovering that there was a hole in the ozone layer over the Arctic. Crutzen proposed sending aircraft 747s to dump huge quantities of sulfur particles into the far reaches of the stratosphere to cool down the atmosphere. The droplets reflect back incoming solar radiation, said Tom Wigley, a scientist at the National Center for Atmospheric Research, NCAR. Um, I interviewed people from NCAR when I went to the weather modification conference in Austin, Texas, just this past January. Um, we're trying to change the net amount of incoming solar radiation to the Earth's atmosphere. So what is this thing called? It's called Microspheres for Micro Worlds. And you can actually see the paper right here. Boom. Drop that in chat for you guys too because I know you like actual real evidence as opposed to a bunch of bullshit artists trying to scare you the crap out of you. And that is from Rosalind Peterson's agriculturedefensecoalition.org. God rest her soul. So do I believe in chemtrails? You bet your sweet ass. It's a distinct possibility. But the problem is secrecy. And secrecy is a B-I-itch. So we have to deal with this stuff the best way we can. U.S. Marine Corps and U.S. Navy a videotape. Uh, tests of UAVs equipped to deliver chemical payloads. They have the uh, objective individual combat weapon, the OICW. It can fire chemical rounds. Chemical weapons are still a thing. Chemtrails, distinct possibility. That's why we're talking about this first. Then I'm going to rip into Dane and Russ in just a second. Regulating weaponized nanotechnology. How the International Criminal Court offers a way forward. Shout out to Pete Ramone, one of my boys. Um, Pete Ramone focuses highly on nanotechnology. I hope you guys will all check him out on Facebook, Pete Ramone. Um, but these are nanotechnology chemtrails. Yes, Rosalind Peterson died. And uh, I spoke with her many, many times on the phone. Um, and she was a hero of mine because she documented more than most. I still pull files from her website today. So, missed completely in the Air Force 2025 papers. This is not from Owning the Weather in 2025. I actually read the entire series. And what you'll realize is that in this paper, concepts um, provide precise control of aerosol dispersal, allow controlled suspension of airborne particles, enable weather control over localized areas, providing precise control for electromagnetic and other field generation using UAV constellations or unmanned aerial vehicle drones, drones that deploy chemtrails. You cannot make that up. Here's another one. This is from 2025 Operational Analysis. Attack microbots and sensor microbots. Various deployment approaches are possible, including dispersal as an aerosol, transportation by large platform, and full flying crawling autonomy. Link to that right there. Yes, I made these infographics because nobody reads anything anymore. So I'll have to read it for you and give you the short version. And that was in 2025 Operational Analysis. Read all about it, all in this one article, Chemtrails, Calmatives, and Terrorism. So, um, 
Moving along, we got Smart Dust, Rogue Geoengineering. You guys read the rest of it. Do you really think that's air you're breathing? Mm, me, not so much. But back then, this was written in 2015. I called it the Clarity Clause. And this was my solution to this problem, how we get to accountability and uh, transparency. It is now called uh, the NMOD modification the environmental modification accountability act it's based on something called nmod nmod was the weather warfare ban of 1976 it is available on the sidebar of every single page on climateviewer.com just click on it and come over here and look at a real solution an infographic on all these technologies download my powerpoint presentation which you can flip through you can download this powerpoint you can send it to your congressman this is a real solution based solution not like you know hey we're gonna sue the government and take all your money to go do it this is something you could do your damn self um because this is all free and open source um of course i did go to the weather modification conference it was the 98th annual american meteorological societies meeting in austin texas january 9th through the 11th 2018 where I attended the 21st conference on planet inadvertent weather modification. If you click right here where it says videos from, you can see all of my interviews from that. Where I interviewed Dr. Jim Fleming, a uh, personal hero, world's top historian on weather modification and geoengineering. I interviewed the U.S. Naval Research Lab. I broke their balls about HARP. Raytheon sensor and the AWIPS, if you don't read about you got to watch this one. Basically, they're talking about replacing every single next-gen um, radar, um, the Joint Surveillance System, FAA long-range radars, and the Terminal Doppler weather radars, all with Raytheon HARP-style towers all over America. They're being funded right now. And we mentioned NCAR and UCAR up above. I interviewed UCAR while I was there as well. Dr. William Cotton, who was part of Project Storm Fury, watched the videos. All you gotta do is click on that and it'll replace the little picture with a video and you can start watching that. And we talked about jet fuel doping and geoengineering cirrus clouds. Dr. Daniel Rosenfeld from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and Nicoletta Florio from BeHeroic.com. So, you know, these are my interviews from the Weather Modification Conference. Now, I took it to them. I told them about my NMOD solution. You can check that out right here at climateviewer.com slash NMOD. Now, why am I telling you all this? Because it pisses me off when jackasses like Dane Wigington and Russ Tanner tell people Jim Lee's a shill, Jim Lee's a this, Jim Lee's a that. I'm not telling you to not support Russ Tanner or not support Dane Wigington. What I'm telling you is they're full of shit. I debated both of them in 2013 and I whipped their ass. A guy named John Masaria was supposed to have a debate between Mick West, who's from Metabunk, and Dane Wigington. But Mick West never showed up. So John Masaria called me. He said, well, you sit in on this thing and just, you know, so we can actually pull some kind of recording out of this. I was like, fine, let's do this thing. I'll talk to the guy. Why not? What's it going to hurt? Um, and they really, you know, it didn't go too well. Because basically, all I did was I asked Dane. I said, Dane, give me your definition of geoengineering. Your geoengineeringwatch.org. Um, I want to know what you think about geoengineering because I personally would find that, I think people would find that fascinating. Um, and he could not give me a definition. You, you just can't make this up. I wish it were true. It weren't true, but it is. And unfortunately, you know, it went downhill from there very quickly. Um, and he didn't like that. He didn't like that a lot. So he dipped out and then shortly thereafter, Russ Tanner spoke up who was in the background the entire time and I didn't know it. And I said to Russ Tanner, I'm like, all right, so what's your deal? And he's like, I can smell chemtrails. And I said, well, good. I got a good job for you as a bloodhound because if you can smell something that's five miles away, there's a lot of people who could really use your sniffer. 
And of course he took offense to that and things didn't go well. That was the end of that conversation. So it was like, all right, John, you got to put that up on the internet because people need to know these guys are full of shit. And John, I'm sorry, had deleted the videotape because he basically said it would ruin Dane Wigington. And that's unfortunate. So I'm making this video today to just stay straight out right here to this camera right now. Let's, I want to make this very freaking clear. I double dog dare you. Dane Wigington, Russ Tanner, or Matt Lamon, or anybody for that matter, I will debate you on this subject about chemtrails, Delta Airlines, how clouds are made, how it works, and we'll get the record straight real quick. You will not accept my challenge. Dane Wigington fears me. I was supposed to be on um, a, a conversation at uh, University of Cornell. There was a lady who had a radio show. She would invited me on. And then she said, well, I'm going to have Dane Wigington on as well. I was like, did you tell him that I'm coming on the show? And she's like, no, why should I? I said, well, I don't think that you're really going to like that. He's really going to like that. So then she calls me back and she's like, yeah, I did talk to Dane. And in fact, he said he would not be on the show with you. He didn't want anything to do with you. And that if you were going to be on the show, he wouldn't come. So have a nice day, Jim. See you later. <laughs> so I got kicked to the curb and I understand why. You know, he's he's popular. He's, you know, this and that. And he's good at bullshitting people and scaring people. So that makes for great radio. Fine with me. Problem is, it doesn't help the community. It doesn't help us ever get to a solution now I'm gonna repeat this please go to geoengineeringwatch.org listen to Dane Wigington I don't listen to his shit I don't listen to his shit because a, I don't have enough time I do my own research and B that's how most of us work you know we're all you know I believe in rugged individualism so I have no issues with him doing his thing and me doing my thing what I do have an issue with is him deleting any comment where somebody says, hey, but what about the stuff on weathermodificationhistory.com? Don't you think people might want to see some of this stuff? Because the work being done over here is freaking unique and priceless. There is no other website you can go and read 799 newspaper articles dating from 1800 to present about weather modification. The list just goes on and on and on. So you can feel free to come over here and check those out. Ooh, it just gets weird. It just gets weird. Does gunfire produce rain? Using x-rays to make rain. This is dated 1919. There is no better evidence on the internet than what is on weathermodificationhistory.com. All of these newspapers right here were put together by Dominic Marama. Love my ninja. Come over to weathermodificationhistory.com. Scroll down a little further. You can see my infographic on the top 10 technologies used to modify the weather today. You can see the people involved, the patents involved. Now, this patent list is the patent list that Dane Wigington stole from me. You can read all about this. I originally posted this patent list in 2011, which you can see right there. And it's also been featured on my other websites, resonated.net, resonated.com, terraformingincorporated.com, and now I'm on climateviewer.com. So I got rid of my old you know, URLs, just climateviewer.com. But my patent list has been featured on geoengineeringwatch.org, naturalnews.com, and infowars.com. Um, and the list goes on and on and on. Now, I only did this list from 1891 to 2003. And I stopped right at 2003. There's a couple extra ones in there. And you're going to notice if you go to Danes, it's the same thing. You've seen this patent list stolen all over the internet. I put this together. I'm going to finish 2003 to present because that lazy son of a bitch ain't never going to do it. Um, but he will take credit for my work and, you know, get real popular off of it. A lot of people have done that. 
Um, but when I take offense is when, you know, people like that don't want you to see the big picture. Like Bill Gates and company trying to take money to steer hurricanes. Things like that. So they'll focus on what will make them popular. They'll take it piece by piece and, uh, you know, use it. Um, Matt Lamon, basically his entire documentary Frankenskies was stolen from the timeline that's right here on weathermodificationhistory.com. You can just scroll down here, see, learn the importance, future, and the scary stuff of weather modification. It goes from pluviculture to cloud seeding to geoengineering to geophysical warfare, starting in 1887 with James Pollard Epsi, moving all the way up to today, Charles Hadfield, Steiger Vortex, rain-making guns. Um, when cloud seeding was invented, the very next year it was used to steer a hurricane. Irving P. Crick invented the ground-based cloud seeder. Maps of cloud seeding projects, 1952 to 65. Project Skywater, 61 to 88. Project West for Needle. President Kennedy addressing the United Nations on weather modification. Lyndon Johnson doing the same. Saturn rockets blowing up water in space. Project High Water. Project Storm Fury. Project High Altitude Research Program, the Harp Cannons from 1965. Yes, Dane Wigington is the plagiarist in chief and that's why i'd love to debate him because he doesn't actually know anything about any of that shit he stole and he stole it from many many activists i've got many many people have reached out to me and saying yeah he stole my article it's up there on his website so dane wigginton's a thief a liar and a cheat He's made himself popular by paying for advertisement to put him up on the SEO charts. Me, I'm kind of broke. Um, I live in a double wide, and I'm not worried about that. I, me and my wife and my two kids, we are happy, and we are healthy, and, and we are going to continue doing this no matter what. But you're never going to see about the CIA on Geoengineering Watch or Russ Tanner's website because... They don't want you coming over here looking at this. They are censoring me, not the other way around. Go to Chemtrail Global Skywatch. Please sign up. Read all the bullshit he's got over there. Let him tell you about how he can smell chemtrails. <coughs> and let Dane Wigington continue to just snow you over with all the fear porn in the world and promises of a lawsuit that's ever going to come to fruition when it will not. So what I hope that you guys will do is check out their material but check out mine as well. It is unique. It is well referenced. If you send weathermodificationhistory.com to a, a congressman, their mouth is going to drop open because all of this is referenced. It is legal. It is real. And the list goes on and on and on. Stanford Star Labs, International Treaties and Active Experiments in Space, how HARP was invented at the Department of Defense HARP Steering Group Joint Services Program, 89 through 90. Arecibo ionospheric heating, silver lining boats, FOIAs, actual FOIAs from the military talking about using carbon black dust to do weather modification. But that's not, yeah, that, you're right. But their viewers aren't like that. They want, they want to know. You really think they want to know. I, I think that a lot of the people that go there, they do want to know the truth. Um, and I find it highly unfortunate that, you know, Dane at every single opportunity has, you know, bad mouthed me. Now, I, I don't want to be making this video. I'm just sick and tired of people going, why can't you two get along? I've tried. The last time I called him was about a couple months ago. And I said, Dane, this is Jim. Hey, man, can we talk? He says, Jim, I cannot talk to you. I'm going to hang up the phone now. <laughs> so there's not going to be any peace in the Middle East, let alone in the chemtrail community. And I wish that that would change. And it's only going to change if people start focusing on pragmatism and finding real solutions and backing that up with real evidence. I've got the evidence on weathermodificationhistory.com. I have a solution at climateviewer.com slash nmod. And I still say, 
go check out their websites, listen to what they have to say, but please listen to mine too. And I think that if you weigh the two together, you're going to realize that the facts and the honest truth and the pragmatism are all available right here. Um, and maybe when you go post that on their website and they delete your comment, you're going to start to see who the real problem is. So with that being said, I'm only going to be able to break through this censorship barrier if you guys will support me. So I hope you will do that by coming over to my Patreon. It's at patreon.com slash climate viewer. Um, maybe one day I'll be able to afford to pay for all that SEO work that Dane Wigington and company have. And maybe I can get my stuff in the search engine results. And then we'll start to break through this fear porn FUD, um, you know, just scaring the shit out of people to make a buck thing. Because for me, this is about the truth. And this is about doing something for my children. And the only way we're going to do that is if we all get educated and we find a real solution that we can agree on. And you don't have to fully agree with me. I love it when people come over and comment on my articles and tell me I'm full of shit. You are more than welcome to do that. The only comments I ever delete on my websites or my social media are ones that include violence. Because I do not approve of violence. I do not think that that is ever going to get us a solution. In fact, I think it will make the problem worse. So, educate yourself. You can do that. But you got to be willing and able. And I used to say in all my videos, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. And that comes from Dr. Seuss. And Dr. Seuss was a great activist. And I believe that planting trees will solve a lot of these problems. But regardless, that's for another video to talk about the water cycle. What we're talking about today is control of your mind. And people do that through words, and it's called slave speak. So what I would hope that each of you would do was come over here to climateviewer.com slash propaganda and read the anatomy of slave speak. And then go through my geoengineering section, go to uh, weathermodificationhistory.com, come over here to climateviewer.com or climateviewer.org, and you can actually see all of the cloud seeding generators that are currently in operation all across America. Something you're not going to see anywhere else. I created these maps to flesh out the big picture of what's going on. And what you're going to quickly see is when you look at the government reports on weather modification and you see where the cloud seeding generators are and you realize that these things are operational every single day and that neither one of, you know, Dane Wigginton or Russ Tanner ever want to talk about real weather modification going on today in downtown America on the West Coast affecting all of us on the East Coast because we don't have water problems over here like they've got until they try to string every drop of water out of the sky with their cloud seeding generators maps details here Colorado State Water Board Water Management links and details in all of these dots, just come over here, click on the little circle, show you where I got them from, let you see um, things like this, cloud seeding generators. And they're in operation every single day. So it's not just chemtrails, it's not just Delta Airlines, it's all of the above. It's ionospheric heaters, it's cloud ionizers. Um, the list goes on and on. You can come over here and check out this article, 10 Technologies to Own the Weather Today. It is my most referenced article I've written to date. You can download that infographic. It's free of charge. I hope that you will use it. And you can go through and look at things like ionosphere carriers, sounding rockets, satellites, related stuff here. That is a aluminum chemtrail. That is a lithium chemtrail. And that is an aluminum, lithium, and barium chemtrail all in one. Those are sounding rockets. Harp, how it works. My playlist, chemtrails from space. Please check that one out. Pretty epic videos there. YouTube link right there. And I break down the history of sounding rockets on that. J2X cloud making rockets, laser beams for um, creating the laser developed atmospheric lens, 
um, steering lightning bolts. You can't make this stuff up with plenty of references. Rain making lasers could trigger showers on demand. Dressed laser aimed at clouds may be key to inducing rain lightning. Lasers can be used to steer lightning mid strike. Cloud seeding, how it works. Ground based generators, flight based generators, the map I just showed you. All in one article, cloud making bomb. That is a cloud seeding bomb from Operation Popeye. It's called the Cold Cloud Modification System. It was developed at China Lake. And how CIA, the CIA was using weather warfare to destroy sugar crops in Cuba at the same time as Operation Popeye. By the way, the CIA did Operation Popeye over Vietnam as well. Things not talked about. How President Ahmadinejad in Iran said that Europe is stealing their rain. And it got up to 150 degrees in Iran as a result. Weather warfare is a real thing. Cloud ionizers, ionization technologies and the like. Um, and cloud creation. How they make clouds using jet engines and jet fuels. And the history goes way back to something called the Mateotron that the Russians were using. Dr. Mash Alamaro from MIT, when he was speaking at the Department of Homeland Security's Hurricane Modification Workshop, he talked about putting jet, um, you know, basically putting these on a tugboat and using jet engines to spray carbon black dust into the um, hurricanes. Similar to what they talked about back in 1976. This is Gray et al. Weather modification by carbon dust absorption of solar energy. And what do they have here? A jet engine with a carbon making section spraying chemtrails of carbon black dust to steer hurricanes. And, you know, here's the, the chemical breakdown on that. With that jet fuel breakdown, yes, all the aluminum and barium strontium metals, they're all in the jet fuel. So, Jets make clouds. Clouds are filled with metal. That's a problem. And for the special person in chat who mentioned atmospheric rivers, bonus mystery technology, steering atmospheric rivers by a company called Acquiesce, and the other is called Cyblue, and they basically say this. Signals are launched from ground-based servers to adjust the flight paths of weather systems. So they shoot microwaves in the sky. Those microwaves steer weather. Read all about it. That's the CEO, um, David Miles, I believe his name was. Pull this from memory. It's been a second. Um, and Mr. Kaczynski, which is a real American hero slash the scariest guy I ever heard of. So check that out. 10 technologies to own in the weather today. So my point is, I hope that you guys will look into the big picture. Because just going around talking to Congress people, talking to your local representative, and bitching about chemtrails is going to get you nowhere. You have to be specific. You have to know your technology. You have to have the kinds of real credible references that, we're, that are going to be necessary for us to change this paradigm. This paradigm is secrecy. And that was uh, best exemplified in the very first article I showed you. These experiments happened all across America where they were dumping chemicals from planes all over, testing on us like we're rats, and it took 50 years for us to find it out. That's why it's the first article in my series. It was written in 2013. And this is still true today. Um, if we're ever going to get to find out what the secret programs are, we need to come at it with pragmatism. That's why when I talk about chemtrails, specifically when I'm talking about planes making clouds, I refer to them by their proper terminology, and that is cirrus clouds. So if you go to climateviewer.com slash geoengineering, you will see a page called cirrus clouds matter. And it is the most credible, most referenced place you're going to find any kind of information on this. I'm going to drop that in chat as well. The history of chemtrails, it's a timeline, it's a this and that, but this is about language control, people, because I'm going to give you a scenario. Russ Tanner walks outside, sees a cloud coming out of a plane, points at it. He says, that is a chemtrail. 
scientist standing right next to him says, No, sir. That is a contrail. They are both right. Because both chemtrail and contrail are high-level descriptors. Those are slave speak. They are words that are highly argumentative and they have different meanings based on the individual. Meaning that they are subject to argument or subject to being completely freaking ignored. That's why for the longest time when I was talking to the public, I'd call them chemtrails just generically. Oh yeah, chemtrails. And when I talk to the scientists, I say things like persistent contrails, spreading contrails, contrail cirrus, contrail induced cirrus, contrail induced cloudiness, aviation induced cloudiness, aviation induced cirrus, induced cirrus cloudiness, Man-made clouds, I like to just personally call them artificial clouds because that's exactly what they are. They are not natural clouds and they are made by planes. And all we need to know is that planes are making clouds that are not natural and they're screwing up the sky and we will say enough is enough. Now, if you want to get sciencey and you want to actually try to argue with somebody about that, you're going to need facts. You can get facts from climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. These facts will arm you with the information you need to make a difference. I hope that you will do that because when you come here, I've got a great fact. Um, how does it work? You know, what makes a cirrus cloud? Carbon black, the self levitating cloud seed. Are cirrus clouds a bad thing? What are they doing about them? Are cirrus clouds melting the poles? Are jet aircraft geoengineering your, our skies? You bet your sweet ass they are. Uh, are cirrus clouds filled with metals? I think I've covered that better than anybody. Yes, they are. In fact, the, the documentary called Overcast, the director of it, Matthias, actually personally thanked me. He said, you know, man, you've really helped me make this documentary. And, you know, we're really getting somewhere for a change. It's a damn shame he didn't put that in the credits of that documentary, but whatever, man. We're changing the world over here, and we're going to continue to. On, off, cirrus clouds, how does it work? Well, you can get your answers by coming over here. And uh, all the way down here at the bottom of the timeline is a nice little article on dope jet fuel. And it's called Dope Jets Fuel Sulfur Content Geoengineering. This is your million dollar prize on how it works today, how you turn a chemtrail on and off. Oh, I said chemtrail. I meant cirrus cloud. How you do that using biofuels and biofuels for contrail control and the ND Max and the access to flights that the NASA DLR and company are flying. They're using biofuels to control clouds and they're doing it for geoengineering purposes. And unless you come down here and actually get into the real patents on how it works and it has to do with jet fuel. These are facts, undeniable facts on how they want to avoid ice supersaturated regions if those clouds are going to heat the planet or um, add a bunch of sulfur so they cool the planet just like Crutzen said and how they can control the clouds, turn them on and off by using two fuels in one tank. Control unit and method for controlling the supply of a vehicle with multiple fuels using the jet fuel electronic control unit. By the way, this can be controlled remotely from the FAA's next gen transportation system, which has something built into it, the supercomputer, the Skynet. It's called the Aviation Environmental Design Toolkit. So guys at the FAA can decide when they want to make clouds, where they want to make them, you can come to climateviewer.org and actually see some of those flight routes yourself. Click on Climate Viewer Maps, other interesting maps, flight routes in the USA, and there's your grids. So these grids are what you're seeing in your sky, and they're all designed by a supercomputer. And that supercomputer takes into environmental, all these environmental concerns that they want to make clouds that cool by day and none by night i hope that you guys will really look into these references i hope that you guys will understand that part of the reason why my message is not getting out there is because of jackasses like dane wigington and Bruce tanner and i find that highly unfortunate 
and it makes me question their motives. But I understand that humans are fallible. People can get jealous. People have many different motivations for why they do what they do. I still firmly maintain, please go to Chemtrail Global Skywatch. I'm sure it is full of tons of good information. I'm sure that Dane Wigington's geoengineeringwatch.org has lots of good information on it. But do not allow them to censor me any longer. I want you to go to their websites, post any one of my three websites, and watch your ass get banned. And then ask yourself this, what do they got to hide? And you can figure that out yourself. Because I sure as hell can't. So with your support, we'll be able to grow this information. We'll be able to get it out there to the public. I'm already winning. I've got the support of a Republican representative out of Washington State. I have three geoengineers who've already signed on and said, yes, I will support your NMOD um, legislation. And we're going to change the world one way or another with or without them. I just rather it be with them. So with that being said, I still firmly stick to my guns on this. I will debate you, Russ Tanner. I will debate you, Dane Wigington. I will debate any climate scientist on the planet. I will debate you, David Keith. I will debate you, Ken Caldera. Anybody willing to have a debate on this subject, I will debate you live. And I will hand you your ass. Because... There's nobody who knows more about this subject than me, and that's why I do what I do. And I'm going to continue to do it till I see somebody doing it better than me. So, with that being said, please, guys, support my work. Um, I just started this Patreon up so that hopefully I can devote more time to changing the world, to getting this information out there, to trying to break through this SEO barrier, the censorship. Um, I literally have 10,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. You can find that at the top of every single page on climateviewer.com. Just click over here on my YouTube channel. And what you're going to see is, I mean, I got 10,000 subscribers over here and videos that literally are hitting 700 views. I do a video on Facebook. The thing gets like 3,000 views just like instantly. I'm going, what the heck is going on? So I'm going to start doing videos here and there and anywhere else I can do them to try to break through this. But please check it out. I have a real solution to geoengineering um, and weather modification without notification. It's called the Environmental Modification Accountability Act. I hope that you guys will look at it. You'll um, really get to understand the point and share this message with people because sharing is caring. And without you guys, um, we're never going to get to the truth. We're just going to get a whole bunch more FUD. And fear, uncertainty, and doubt is just going to leave us naked and alone so please guys um share this message support me and um attack ideas not people and by that because i've got some people that are confused when i say attack ideas not people me calling dane wigington is not a jackass is not me attacking him i think that dane wigington personally is abhorrent just from my personal talking to him on the phone, talking to him via messages, and watching what he does. Regardless of that, I'm a forgiving person. I believe in forgiveness, and I believe in redemption. At any point in the future where he decides he wants to pull his head out of his anus and get his feces consolidated and be pragmatic and come up with solutions, I'll support him 110%. Until that day, you're going to see me making videos like this going... These people are part of the problem. And their problem is that they're censoring people like me. And I'm not alone. So if you want to continue to be the ringleader of the fear porn circus, go right ahead. I ain't that guy. I'm here to arm you with truth and give you pragmatism and give you a solution. So I hope that this video has been informative. I hope that you will share it with your friends and family. I hope that you guys will get educated on how planes make clouds of metal particulates, how they've been dumping aluminum and barium in space for years on end with sounding rockets, how ionospheric heaters can steer atmospheric rivers and jet streams and the like. Check out the maps on climateviewer.org. They're unique. Check Especially check out the geoengineering and weather modification section. Um, and continue to support my work. So I hope that better explains it, and I'll say it one more time. Attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all.
First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to ClimateViewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.